Hey everybody, uh, this will get you a review, uh, review for your upcoming test uh, for uh, gathering and displaying data for Integrated Math 3, Module 20. Okay, let's get started. So, uh, all right, so uh, so you don't have to copy down the table, you guys, but this is the key example uh, on page uh, 1065. So here we have a local community center surveys a small random sample of people in the community about their time spent volunteering. The, the survey asks whether the, uh, the person engaged in regular volunteer work, for whether it was food kitchen, hospital, community center, or, or other. And if so, the duration and frequency of the volunteer work. So here's the duration. That they, so here's how, uh, how many people uh, said they volunteer. This is how many hours they do and how many uh, days a week they do. Of the 20 people surveyed, so <coughs> excuse me, uh, eight said that they do volunteer work. So here's our eight people of the 20. Okay, so the table lists the data for those eight people. If approximately 10,000 people live in the community, calculate each. Okay, so uh, the proportion of adults who volunteer. Well, that was uh, right here, you guys. It was the eight of the 20. So eight out of 20 gives us 40%. Okay, the proportion of hospital volunteers. So now uh, we're just focusing on just these eight volunteers. And so what's the proportion of them that are hospital people? So one, two, three of them. So three of the eight. And so that is uh, 37.5. So if there are approximately 10,000 people living in the community, predict the number of hospital volunteers there are. Okay, so we're going to take... Um, since uh, there's about 40% of the people we're guesstimating that uh, volunteer, and of those, 37.5% of those um, uh, do hospital work, we're going to do 10,000 times 0.4 times uh, 0.375, and that'll give us about 1,500 people uh, do hospital volunteering, okay? All right, so let's make a line plot for the distribution of hours and the distribution of frequencies, the days per week, and describe the shapes, okay? So all these numbers are less than six, so I'm going to make a number line that's one to six, so hours per day, okay? So, okay, so uh, the smallest number I see are two, so I see one, two, three, four, two, so I'm going to put X's above those right there. Okay, and then uh, how many threes do I see? I see this three and this three. So those are my threes right there. There's two of them. How many fours? There's one and there's one five right there. Okay, and then describe the shape. That one is definitely skewed to the right. Okay, so let's do days per week. Okay, so I see a couple of threes. I don't see any twos or ones in there. I see a, uh, a few fours. Uh, I see a few fives and I see uh, that's about it so that's almost uniform distribution if you can put like a rectangle around that then that would be kind of a uniform distribution okay all right so here uh, in exercise two of our homework uh, sections we did number two on page uh, 1058 and we found the mean and standard deviation of the heights uh, to be 70 and 1.5 respectively okay so we found the mean of these and the standard deviation okay so let's make a histogram of those heights we're going to use this this standard deviation in just a bit here you guys so let's make a histogram let's do a frequency table first okay so before I can do a histogram I got to do this frequency table so how many 67's are there so um, I see that there's only that one 67 right there how many 68 so I'm just going through and, and marking off uh, the 68 so there's just one 69s there's those three 70s is four 71s is three 72s is one and 73 there's that one six foot one basketball player okay all right so here we go here's my frequency table right there and we're just gonna make um, uh, bars that go up from 67 let's see I'm gonna go right here um, 67 so I'll go halfway here and go up one okay and then we'll go over and the next one is going to be one so I'm just going to go all the way over because this one's going to go up one also so let me do that so right there okay and then this next one's going to go up three so I'm going to go from here for 69 is going to go up to three Okay, and then the next one's going to go up to four anyway, so there it is right there. Okay, and so how, what's the shape of that graph? Well, that's pretty symmetrical, you guys, so it's normally distributed right there. Okay, so now 
Um, let's use that histogram to find the percent of data that fall within one standard deviation of the mean, okay? So, one standard deviation of the mean, remember the standard deviation is 1.5, so, so here's the mean at 70 right here, so if we go back 1.5, that would take me to 68.5 and go up 1.5 and that take me to uh, 71.5 so um, uh, so we're going to uh, add and subtract the 1.5 and that will give us um, our interval of those basketball players that fall within that so it gives us these bars right here that are within one standard deviation this one goes up to three this one goes up to four this one goes up to three okay so I think there were um, 14 people so if we add all of those up uh, there's 10 uh, data values out of the 14 that are within one standard deviation from the mean. So 10 fourteenths is about 71%. Okay. All right. What if I asked you uh, how many of them fall below the mean? What's the percent that fall below the mean? Well, it would be 1 plus 1 out of 14, which is 2 out of 14. Okay. And above would also be 2 out of 14, one standard deviation. <coughs> Excuse me. This table is found on the bottom of page uh, 1066, and let's make a side-by-side -side box plot of the potassium and the fiber. So here's the potassium and the fiber. Okay, the reason why I didn't do the vitamin C is because these numbers, I couldn't do really a side-by-side -side with these without uh, using a bunch of paper, because there's numbers that go all the way up to 160 on this, and these ones are down in the single digits right here. With these two, I can do side-by-sides and not waste a bunch of paper. So here's the numbers put in order for potassium and fiber. Okay, so there are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the fifth and sixth number, 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, five, six. So my quartile is the average of these guys. I'm sorry, my median is the average of these guys. Here, my median is the average of these guys. Okay, so now we have this seven. So we start with this. There's one, two, three, four, five. So the median is the third, or the quartile is the third number in. And so go three up this way. One, two, three. This is quartile three. One, two, three, quartile one. Start here. One, two, three, quartile three. Okay, so though we're going to use those to make um, uh, the box plots. Okay, so the boxes come from five, seven, and eight, and the other box is going to come from for the fiber is four, eight, and twelve. So we're going to make boxes at those boundaries right there. Now I was telling my students, you know, in class, this one kind of looks like it's skewed to the left, but we haven't put the whiskers on yet. And this one is totally symmetrical, but again, we haven't put the whiskers on. The whiskers go to the small number and the big number, to the small number and the big number. Well, this small number is the exact same as that quartile, so we don't have a left whisker, but this whisker goes all the way to... 24 right there so there's that so this one I don't know it's you know I thought it was skewed left at first but this tail gives me skewed a little bit right so I don't know it's semi-symmetrical I'm guessing this one's definitely skewed to the right because of that big um, whisker right there okay and bananas had the most potassium and I didn't know cherries had a lot of potassium that's kind of cool and pears have the most fiber all right you guys if you're in my class that's going to be your assignment take care